I will show you how to create this inventory panel UI complete with theming and styling. An inventory manager will manage the collectibles which have been picked up by the player and then displayed in the inventory items. Now to create the inventory panel, go to scene, new scene, choose other node and search for a panel container and create that. And we'll just rename this to be inventory panel and let's just save that scene. So go to scenes, the UI folder, and we'll save it as the inventory panel. Select the node, and in the inspector, let's just scroll down to theme. Click on empty, and then just choose quick load, and choose the game UI theme, which we covered in a previous tutorial. Open that, select the theme file, and we still have our dark wood panel. So, in the type variation for the inventory panel, as you can see, we have a base type of panel container. In the type variation, click the edit button here and type dark wood panel, and then just select the tick box. On the inventory panel, let's go add child, search for margin container, and then add child again and search for V box container. And to create the inventory items, let's add another child, search for panel container again, and then rename this to logs. Then click back onto inventory panel, and in our theme, let's add a new item. Write the word inventory item panel, and just click add type to add a custom type. And then in this option here, let's just add a base type. And the base type will be our panel container. Then let's just choose this option here, and then we'll add a new style. So click on empty and choose new style box texture and then click it to activate the style box texture. Then on our texture property, choose new Atlas texture and then just activate that. And then go to game UI and then just drag the basic UI sprites into our Atlas texture and scroll down to edit region and then choose auto slice and then zoom in and select this option here. Click close, then edit subregion and just choose pixel snap and then just drag the bars in and then click close. And then once we've set up the texture, click back on logs and then scroll down. And for the type variation, just click edit and write inventory item panel and then just click tick. And as you can see, it's just starting to apply the panel here. So click on logs add child node and search for texture rep. Then for our texture here, choose new Atlas texture and open that. And then go to assets, game and objects and bring over the basic tools and material sprites. Open that and then choose edit region and then choose grid snap and choose this log item here. Just draw the grid square and then click close and that will create us our log icon. Then add another child node and search for label and rename this as log label and just pop a zero in the text field. Now we need to fit the icon and label in this panel space. So click on logs and for custom minimum size, let's give a width of 26 and a height of 32. Now we need to position the icon so that it's at the top of the panel. So click texture rect and choose center and then choose vertical alignment, shrink begin. And that will just reposition that icon. Then for log label, we want horizontal alignment center and then vertical alignment bottom. The next step is to configure a font so that it renders better under the icon and is more pixelated for this game. So I'll head over to the assets folder and in the UI folder, create a new folder called fonts. And now we will download a font which is more pixelated and will render better for our inventory counter. So head over to damiang.com and download the ZX Palm font. You can do that by just clicking this download link here and I will leave the link for this font in the description below. Once you have downloaded and unzipped the ZX Palm file, Go into the folder and then into PC folder and then take the zxpalm.ttf file, then drag that into the fonts folder 
which we have created under our assets folder. I'm just going to rename this file so that it's organized in our project. I'm just going to say lowercase zx underscore palm. Then I'm going to right click and add a new resource. Then search for font. And what we want to create is a font variation. So create that font variation file and we'll call this zx palm and leave variation on the end. So just save that. Then open this file and drag in the original TTF file. So drag the ZX Palm file over into the base font here. So the font variation resource will allow us to make some slight modifications to our original font. So we are going to use that for our label. And then I'll come back to this resource and make some slight changes. So let's click back on the inventory panel, click game UI theme, and then in the theme, let's add another item type. Type inventory label, and then just click add type. On this option here, let's just choose label as our base type. And set that. Then choose this option, and then click add here to override our fonts file. Then choose the ZX palm variation and drag that into our fonts file here. Then on the option next to this, we want to just reduce this to eight. But first, let's just go back to log label here, scroll down and in type variation, click the edit button and then type inventory label, which is that item type, which we've just created in our theme. Click the tick box. And as you can see, this is now updated to reflect that new font file. Go back to the inventory panel. And the font is currently at 16. And then let's just modify the font size. So I'll choose that option to edit the font and then just reduce this down to eight. So as you can see, eight has better clarity. If we go to 10, it starts to look blurred. So we go eight, 16, then 24. So it's in multiples of eight and the pixel font has been designed to be an eight by eight pixel font. So what we're going to do is just use the size for eight pixels. Now that we have set up the inventory label style, let's just click back on log label and let's just test a few numbers. So we'll try 100. And as you can see, that now makes our item panel stretch. So let's go back to our ZX palm variation and let's make some modifications to our base font. So for extra spacing in the glyph, we can reduce that and bring in those values. So I'm going to put that at minus three. And then I'd like the text to sit actually in this red box or so bring it up a little. So in the top, let's just increase that and we'll leave it at value two. So as you can see, the variation font resource allows us just to make those little tweaks that we need to make for our font. And that can be really useful. Let's now just adjust the margin container so that we have a nicer border around our inventory item. So click on margin container and the default margin will be set to 10 because that's already on our theme, but we don't want to modify it there. Let's just do it on the theme overrides here. So let's just turn on margin left top, right and bottom and then just set the value for for each of those fields. Click back on log label and let's just reset this to zero. And now we can begin duplicating this panel item. So right click on logs and click duplicate and rename this to stone Then rename the label to stone label. And then for texture rex, let's just reset that. Click empty new Atlas texture and open it. Then go to game under assets, objects, and bring over basic tools and materials. Click edit region, and then with grid snap already selected, just draw a grid around the stone item, and then click close, and then save the scene. So click stone, and then duplicate that scene. Let's rename it to corn. Let's rename the stone label to corn label. And on texture rect, let's reset that new Atlas texture. And then for the Atlas texture, go to assets, game objects, and bring over the basic plants. Then edit region, 
And for grid snap selected, let's then just choose this corn icon here. Let's close that. Then for the tomato, let's just duplicate that again. Rename this to tomato. And then the corn label to tomato label. Then choose texture rect, reset the texture, choose new atlas texture, and then bring over the basic plants from the game objects folder under assets. Just set that onto the atlas property, edit region again, and then choose the tomato here under using grid snap mode. Close that. So just bring this up a little and duplicate the tomato scene. Rename this to egg. And for tomato label, we'll rename this as egg label. For texture rect, reset that. Choose new atlas texture. And then for the atlas texture, just bring over the egg item. And for the final inventory item, choose egg, duplicate the scene, and rename this to milk. Then for egg label, we'll call this milk label. Choose texture rect, reset the atlas texture. Choose new atlas texture again. Open that and then bring simple milk and grass item into the Atlas property here. Choose edit region and using grid snap, choose this sprite here and click close and then just save the scene. So now that we have completed our inventory panel UI, let's head over to our game screen, open up the game screen and then drag the inventory panel into the game screen. Then to position the panel, choose anchor preset and then center left. We can now create an inventory manager so that when the player collects the collectibles, we can then update our inventory items and this value here. So first let's head over back to scenes, then to the test scene folder and duplicate the test scene collectibles scene. So duplicate that and we'll call it inventory management and just duplicate that scene. And before we open the test scene, I'm just going to move the inventory panel inside the margin container. So now we've got the correct margin around the panel, but now we need to adjust the positioning of the panel. So for horizontal alignment, choose this option here for shrink begin, and then we need to vertically align the panel as well. And that will just fix the layout. Now head back over to the test scene folder, and open up the inventory manager test scene. Let's just rename this scene here and call that test scene inventory management. Then go to the UI folder and just drag on the game screen. Then go to the scripts folder and in globals, right click, create a new script and call this inventory manager. Let's create that script, open the script and then in project settings, go to globals, and then open up that global script. So just add the inventory manager, open that, and then just add that as a global script and then close the window. And in the script, let's create a new variable and call this inventory, which is a type of dictionary. And then we can just instantiate the dictionary, then create a new signal and call this inventory changed. Then add a function called add collectible and pass in collectible name which is a type of string and will return a void. Then we can say inventory dot get or add and then pass in the collectible name. So what we are doing is adding the collectible name to our inventory dictionary. Then we can say if inventory collectible name equals null then inventory collectible name equals one. So if we have nothing in the inventory which matches our collectible name, then we're going to instantiate the item and then just add the value one. Then we'll say else inventory collectible name plus equals one. So then we're going to keep incrementing that value once we already have something in the inventory with our collectible name in it. And then after that, we can call our signal. Now let's start to add our collectibles to the inventory. So go back over to components. And we've got a reusable component for the collectible item. So open up the collectible component. And then in the onboarder entered method, what we want to do is call our inventory manager and call add collectible. Then we can pass in the collectible name. So 
So before we test the scene, just go back to scripts and globals and open up the inventory manager and put a breakpoint here where inventory.get or add. Then let's head over to the test scene and let's just run our test scene. Now we can get the player to pick up one of the items. So we'll just pick up this stone here. And as you can see, the breakpoint now gets called in our inventory manager script. So first, let's just check and hover over our inventory. So at the moment, there is nothing in the inventory. So let's just add our collectible name, which is stone. And as you can see, stone has null for the counter. So let's just check what happens here. So if we're checking for null, then what we want to do is add one to the collectibles. So inventory now has stone and has a value of one. So this is working as expected. So let's just stop that. And now this method is being called. Let's link up our signal here. So go back to the inventory panel. And for our inventory panel UI scene, choose the inventory panel and attach script. We can save the inventory panel script under scenes UI and click create. And let's first override the ready function. So go ready void and then get our inventory manager. Then connect the inventory change signal and call this on inventory changed. Let's create another function on inventory changed and we'll return a void. And when the inventory changes, let's then get the dictionary from the inventory and then check if we've got any items in there. So the first thing we'll do is check for logs. So just open up the logs panel, choose log label and hold control and then just drag the log panel into your script so that we get an on ready variable. Then in on inventory changed, we can say for inventory dictionary equals our inventory manager dot inventory. Then once we get the inventory from our inventory manager, we can say if inventory dot has, and then we look for that collectible name. And if we have a log in the inventory, then we just need to say log label dot text equals string inventory and then the array item from the dictionary which will get the value and just pass in log. So before we finish this function let's just test picking up multiple logs. So go to test scene objects trees and then the log scene we'll add two more of these items to our scene. Then let's run the scene and then we'll move the player and as you can see, we've just incremented that value. That's the first scene and first collectible that's been added to the inventory. Let's just check if this now increases to two and that increases to two and then three. But now if I pick up the egg, we haven't completed the code for that method. So let's just close the window and finish the rest of that method. So I'll head back to inventory panel and then the inventory panel script. And I'll just finish off this method. So I have now added the rest of the labels from the inventory panel. So we have log stone, corn, tomato, egg and milk. And in the um, inventory change function, we now check the inventory for each of those items. And that just completes the rest of that method. We can now test the scene and test each of those collectibles. So just run the test scene. And now we go to egg. So we have one item here milk one item corn is one item tomato and stone and our three logs let's close that window and that brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to create an inventory panel ui and then allow your player to pick up collectibles which are then added to your inventory if you like what you've seen in this tutorial please remember to hit like and subscribe so you receive future updates of all my other tutorials Thank you for watching.